So welcome to this session um, on which foundation programme. I am going to try and provide some key information about the different types of foundation programmes that you can apply for and give you a bit of an overview of the application procedure. I know you've just been given a bit more detail about the academic foundation programme, so I won't bore you about that for ages, but we'll touch on it. Um, so I am currently in my second year of the foundation programme and I went through the application process two years ago and I remember that some of it felt a little bit confusing. And since then, um, the UK foundation programme has introduced a new programme called the Foundation Priority Programme and the Royal College of Psychiatrists is also offering a Psychiatry Foundation Fellowship. So there are even more options for you than I had when I was applying. So I'm going to try and break them down a little bit so you can understand what's on offer. So what is the UK Foundation Programme? Essentially, it is the first two years of your training as a doctor out of medical school. Um, it's a workplace based programme that tries to bridge the gap between medical school and starting your specialty training in your chosen field, where your training becomes more and more focused. So it tries to give you the opportunity to, to develop basic skills that are essential to your practice, um, regardless of what field you end up in, and to build up experience. So you get a variety of experience across different specialties in these two years and in different settings. You spend time managing acutely unwell patients and also those with more chronic problems, and you'll have placements that are based in the community and also based in the hospital. Typically, it consists of three four-month rotations each year, so six rotations in total, um, and one of these would be either community or psychiatry. Um, there is a little bit of variation in this. So, for example, my F1 year that I finished in August was two six-month rotations instead of three four-month rotations. It just slightly depends on where you end up. So, what programmes are on offer to you? There, is the, there are three main sort of foundation programmes that are on offer from the UK Foundation Programme. And there's this additional um, Psychiatry Foundation Fellowship, which is offered from the Royal College of Psychiatrists with a separate application procedure. The top three on this list you can see here um, are all like core cool foundation programmes with some additional extras from the academic programme or the priority programme that essentially act to sort of enhance uh, the basic two-year programme. We'll go through each of these in a bit more detail. So if we start off by talking about the main foundation programme um, and its application procedure before we talk a little bit more about your extra options. So this is the programme that most people will end up doing and everyone has to apply to this programme, irrespective of whether you also want to apply to an academic foundation programme or the priority programme or not. Just to give you a little bit of context, about 6,000 um, final year students graduate every year and go into the foundation programme and about 700 posts are available via the academic programme or the priority programme. So the majority of people end up doing the foundation programme. It's a two year programme, as you know, and there is a set curriculum and a number of required competencies each year that you have to achieve throughout the year. You then have to provide evidence of these at your annual review of competency progression or your ARCP. And this is a requirement to complete each year. So when you complete your first year, you can then get full registration with the GMC. And then when you complete your second year, you get a certificate to say that you finished the foundation programme. And that's essential to um, applying to any specialty training at all. So how do you apply? Applications are made via an online portal called Oriel, which is used for job applications for doctors within the NHS, not just at foundation, but further on as well. And if you're currently studying in a UK medical school, um, your medical school will nominate you to the programme and you'll get an email inviting you to register. So it's pretty straightforward. You just wait to get that email and then there'll be a link that you follow and you fill in your details. When you're applying to the foundation programme, your initial application is for allocation to a foundation school. So the UK is made up of 20 foundation schools and you have to rank all of them in order of preference 
um, in your application. Once you then get allocated to a school a few months later, you go in and you rank the jobs that are available through that school um, and then you're allocated to a specific job. So to make all of this make a bit more sense, here is a map of the UK showing the 20 foundation schools. They're also sometimes referred to as deaneries or units of application um, and they're all used interchangeably. Um, as you can see, they vary quite significantly in size um and also in terms of the number of jobs available um, and this is something to bear in mind when you are ranking your preferences because for example if you apply to scotland that's like a whole foundation school makes up the entirety of scotland so a lot of f1 and f2 jobs are done at different hospitals so bear in mind that you might end up moving quite significant distances between each year um, so it's just something to keep in mind. Um, allocations are made on the basis of your application score. This is out of a maximum of 100 points. 50 of these points come from the situational judgment test, which uh, your medical schools will tell you about in more detail. We won't go into that now. Um, but you will all sit this um, after you have made your application. And the other 50 comes from the educational performance measure, which is a combination of your decile within your medical school and up to seven points for any additional educational achievements you have. So this is where things like an intercalated year where you might have done a BSc or a BA um, will score you some points, um, or if you have a master's or a PhD, and you can get up to two points for two publications that should have a PubMed ID in order to count. So one thing to be aware of when you are applying is that you won't know your total application score when you submit your application. And this is important if you're applying to the foundation programme, which you all will be, or if you're applying to a foundation priority programme, because it also uses this point system. And you won't know your situational judgment test score until the day that you're allocated to a foundation school. Um, so let's just have a quick look at the timeline of events. So between June and August is when your medical schools will put um, your details forward to the UK Foundation Programme. In August, the academic foundation programmes are available to you. So you can start looking at the jobs if you're thinking of applying to one of them. And you can look at um, each deanery's information. In late September, you are able to register on the online system to make your application. And in October, you complete online applications for any of the programmes, the Foundation Programme, the Academic Foundation Programme and the Foundation Priority Programme. So it's the same application window for all of them, but they all are separate applications. If you're doing the AFP, um, sorry if some of this is repeated information because I know you've just had a talk about the AFP, but if you are applying to it, the shortlisting and interview process is between October and January. Um, and you will either sit the SJT in December or January based on when your medical school um, does its sitting. Um, Academic Foundation Programme offers come out prior to um, the main allocations and you also get the Foundation Priority Programme offers before the main allocations to foundation schools are made. Then once you've had these allocations, you go through um, choosing your jobs and ranking the jobs that you're interested in. Um, and you will get your final job in your foundation school in April before programmes start in August. So that's sort of like a brief overview of the foundation programme. So let's sort of talk in a bit more detail about some of the alternative or sort of enhanced options that are available to you. So the first one of these is the Academic Foundation Programme, which offers you an opportunity to undertake some research or teaching or to develop leadership and management skills alongside your clinical training. This additional aspect is linked to a specific rotation. So if, for example, you're doing a research project, it will be linked to a certain specialty. So some of the jobs that are offered might be, for example, in obstetrics and gynaecology with a research project in obstetrics and gynaecology or I don't know, another specialty. Um, you are given an academic supervisor who supports your project. This is on top of an educational supervisor and a clinical supervisor that you are given 
as part of the foundation program. Most of the time that you get for the academic aspect of this program is in your second year of the foundation program. And it's either a one of the four month blocks that you have, or it might be as a day release throughout the year. So one day a week is spent doing this alternative thing, not in clinical duties. It can also be a combination of the two. This slightly depends on what you're doing. So for example, if you're doing a lab based research project as your academic fund, like as part of your academic foundation program, it's likely to be an, in a four month block. So you've got four months to do that project. Whereas if you're doing something in teaching, then it might be as a day release throughout the year because that's a bit more appropriate. Um, and when it comes to applying for the AFP, there are 15 units of application as opposed to the 20 that you have for the normal foundation program. So I'll just go back to the map to show you. Oh no, sorry, we've gone the wrong way. Okay, so essentially London, which is down here at B, um, is made up of three foundation schools. But when it comes to the AFP, they are grouped together so that you apply to London as a unit rather than the individual schools like Northwest Thames, North Central and East or South Thames um, within it. Um, and that's just a, there's one for the Midlands as well. So A just links three um, foundation schools together as a single unit of application for the AFP. Um, the application is also made through Oriel in that same October window, as we said, um, and you can make an, a maximum of two applications to the fun, um, academic foundation programme on top of applying to the foundation programme. Each application that you make to the academic foundation programme is to a unit of application or, or and each um, each application is separate and you will be filling in different information for each one. Um, academic foundation programmes are offered on the basis of an interview so be ready for that and I know you've had a lot more detail about that um, just before I came on. So the application the application form for the AFP will ask you for more details than you will fill in for your foundation programme application where you are essentially ranking the foundation schools initially and then ranking the jobs you're interested in. It will want details of things like publications you might have, presentations you might have done and prizes you've got through medical school. Um, also all units of application other than London ask you to fill in what are commonly referred to as white space questions which are essentially free text questions that each individual unit of application sets. Answers are typically a few hundred words and they are used to help select candidates to invite to interview. Those questions are released in August and I would highly recommend that if you're applying for an AFP, you start preparing your answers to these questions well in advance of the application window, because the more applications you're putting in, like the longer it's going to take you on Oriel. It's not a particularly complicated process, but it can be quite lengthy when you're having to look through lots and lots of different jobs and decide which foundation school is right for you. Not everyone that applies is offered an interview, and then only those with the highest interview scores are offered a post. Um, when the offers come out, they typically only give you a short window of time um, for you to either accept or reject the offer, which is somewhere between 24 and 48 hours, so be prepared for that. And then if you do choose to accept that offer, you will be withdrawn from the main application procedure for the foundation programme, which is absolutely fine, you don't need to be in that procedure anymore, but it's something to bear in mind that if you do change your mind and you don't want to do the academic programme anymore, you, if you turn that down, you won't have any job. <laughs> um, so just keep that in mind when applying. So let's sort of move on now to talk about a new foundation programme that was offered for the first time in 2020. So you could apply in 2019 and those that are starting their jobs this year are those that are doing this for the first time. It's called the Foundation Priority Programme. Um, it's very, very new. And it has been developed to try and support certain areas of the UK that are a little bit less popular for applicants and sometimes struggle to retain trainees beyond their foundation years into that specialty training. So they're offering 
a whole range of incentives and programs and extra opportunities throughout your foundation years um, to try and maximize opportunities for those wishing to train in these slightly less popular parts of the country. Um, and like with the main foundation program, you don't have to interview as part of the um, selection procedure. It's only the academic foundation program that you interview for. So where can you do one of these sort of enhanced programs? You don't need to look at this table in detail, but it's just to try and highlight that there's a, quite a range of, in the number of these programs that are being offered in different bits of the country. So some foundation schools aren't offering them at all. This is schools typically like in London, Oxford, where I am, don't offer any seven, a couple of others. And then within those that are offering them, there's quite a range in the number of posts that are available. OK, so applying for one of these priority programmes is pretty similar to applying just for the foundation programme. You again, you apply via Oriel and it's a ranking process. So you look at the jobs that are available, you decide what area you might want to do one of these jobs in and what you want to get out of it. And then you only rank the jobs on Oriel that you're interested in and you would consider taking if you were offered. You don't have to rank all of the programmes. Um, but similarly to the AFP, if you get offered a foundation priority programme post and you accept it, they will take you out of the foundation programme allocation procedure. So again, if you changed your mind, you don't have another option. So what do these, does this programme actually offer? There's an opportunity to tailor your foundation training towards a whole variety of different things. Um, some of the programmes offer an emphasis on a certain specialty. There are also further opportunities to undertake additional training in leadership and management or to go into medical education. You can even get additional qualifications through this programme um, alongside your clinical duties, or you can focus in digital health and entrepreneurship. There are even some places where you can do some of your training abroad and a couple of programmes that offer enhanced pay packages in order to incentivize people. So we'll just go through each of these things in a bit more detail, but it's important to bear in mind that each each individual post varies quite significantly and how each foundation school is offering these additional benefits varies quite a lot as well. So I'll try and give some examples, um, but remember there will be variety. Okay, so some programmes provide an emphasis on certain specialties and these are really, really good if you already know what you want to specialise in or you have a particular specialty in mind that you want to look at in more detail. And as I said, there are a range of programmes on offer in different locations. Um, so here you can see the foundation schools that are offering this kind of programme where you get specific focus on a certain specialty. There are only a few specialties that they are offering. So GP, obstetrics and gynaecology, oral and maxillofacial surgery, paediatrics, pathology, pre-hospital care and psychiatry. So there, it's not that there's, you can do any specialty through this scheme. And again, you can see it's only certain parts of the country where this priority programme based on around a certain specialty is on offer. So if we look at an example to try and give you a better idea, um, East Anglia is offering a few posts with a focus on either paediatrics, GP, or obstetrics and gynaecology. And the way that they're offering this is essentially by giving you a dedicated educational supervisor in that specialty. So if you get the GP um, training programme, you'll have a GP educational supervisor who will spend half a day with you every month giving you further teaching and discussing cases that they've seen that's relevant to that specialty. They'll also provide mentoring and help you with career planning and applying to that specialty if you do decide that that's what you want to go into. There's themed specialty teaching throughout the year and you're given a quality assurance project to do based around that specialty. So essentially, you're doing your foundation programme, you're doing your six placements, four months, four months, four months, but 
there's a little bit of a focus on one specialty in particular to try and nurture any interest you have in that specialty. Okay, so moving on, there are a number of programs that offer leadership and management courses and qualifications that you can get alongside doing your clinical training. So they're aiming to try and provide young doctors to, um, to provide them with exposure um, to leading leadership and management um, within the NHS. And these are things that we don't really get much exposure to in medical school, if we get any, but are actually really essential skills that are expected of doctors working within the NHS. So, for example, if you decide to become a GP and you become a partner in a GP surgery, you get given a budget um, that you have to decide how to spend and you have to manage your practice. And even on a daily basis, your seniors are deciding how they're managing their team of junior doctors every day um, and wards are deciding how they're managing their staff and so on and so forth like it ranges massively but it's used every single day these skills and we don't really get much training in it so these programs offer specific opportunities to get qualifications in this area um, so for example the Northern Foundation School offers an Institute of Leadership and Management qualification um, and East Anglia offers a leadership apprenticeship that you would go and do one day a week um, at certain points throughout your two years on top of your clinical duties. Um, so through that you'll get a bit of an extra qualification in this area that you can add to your CV and take forward or expand upon further as you go through your career. There are also programmes that are designed to engage foundation doctors in education and teaching. So again, just to give you examples, because I think that's the easiest way to actually understand what's on offer. Um, Yorkshire and Humber is offering a four month block in your second year where you can complete a dedicated medical education project and do a PG cert with the local university. Um, so you get some formal qualification in medical education and you also get to sort of delve into it further by, by doing a project. Um, and in West Midlands South um, Foundation School, you get the chance to do a PG cert in education. Um, and in your F2 year, you would spend 80% of your time doing your clinical duties and 20% of your time engaging more with education rather than it being 100% clinical work. Um, so talking about the digital health and entrepreneurship side of things, healthcare is becoming more and more digital um, with, you know, these apps that allow you to consult a GP through your phone. There are now ECG machines that link to your phone. Um, and I believe the new Apple Watch has like a um, blood oxygen monitor within it. So everything is becoming more digital and people are finding new opportunities all the time to modernise healthcare and use technology to help patients out. Um, so an example of a programme that can help nurture your interest in this kind of thing, if that's what you're interested in, is in West Midland South, you do a digital health um, and on or entrepreneurship project, which you then present at the end of your second year of the foundation programme you would get the opportunity to do workshops throughout the year in digital health and entrepreneurship through local universities. And you would also get a course certificate in the end and associate membership of the Faculty of Clinical Informatics. Okay, so I mentioned that a couple of placements offer um, you the opportunity to do some of your training abroad. There, I couldn't find a huge number of these programmes out there but there are a couple on offer. So West Midlands North um, is one of the foundation schools in the Midlands, obviously. Um, it offers three international fellowship programmes. So this is where you would complete your foundation years over three years rather than two, and you would spend one of those years training abroad. So essentially how it works is you do your first year, your FY1 year in the UK, and then you would do your first two placements of your second year. This is at Shrewsbury and Telford Hospitals. After your second placement of F2, so in about April of your second year, you would then move 
out to New Zealand for a year um, and work with a partner organisation out there which offers experience in a more rural location of New Zealand. You would work there for 12 months, continue your training while you're there and then come back to the UK to complete your final placement of your foundation year two. So what this is offering is essentially like a formal way of doing something that a lot of people consider doing as an FY3 anyway. So it's quite common to take a, a year out of training, as it's described, an F3 after you complete your foundation programme. And quite a lot of people go to work abroad in this time. New Zealand is a popular destination. So this is a way of formalising that and ensuring that you have a job um, working in New Zealand if that's something that you're interested in doing. Okay, we then have a few of these priority programme places that are offering financial incentives to go and work in certain areas within the UK. So you essentially get a bumped up pay package. Northern is offering 39 posts, um, which will pay you an additional seven and a half thousand pounds per year. And Trent is also offering a number of programmes with an enhanced salary package as well. So if you're interested in working in those regions in the UK anyway, applying for the Foundation Priority Programme and these specific jobs might just give you a, a, a bigger paycheck essentially at the end of the day for doing the same job. Um, your two years of Foundation training would essentially be normal. You wouldn't have that extra like medical education aspect or anything but you would just get a financial boost and then there are also some of these placements that are offering a bit more geographical stability so like I mentioned earlier some of the foundation schools are quite large and it's very common for people to work in different hospitals in their first year and their second year within the program and that can often mean having to move within those two years and bear in mind that you're first year of the foundation program finishes on like a Tuesday and your second year starts on the Wednesday so you don't have a gap within which to move. So there are some programs under the foundation priority program scheme that are offering geographical stability where you would stay in the same place for both years. So this is the case in Northern Ireland. Typically in Northern Ireland they offer um, everyone one year in Belfast and then one year somewhere else in Northern Ireland and the rest of Northern Ireland is split up into four regions so they are offering eight programs in the Foundation Priority Programme where you would stay in the same region of Northern Ireland for the two years so one of these four regions that's not Belfast you would be based there for both of your foundation years and Scotland which is a very big deanery, um, is offering incentives to those people who might want to train in the more rural areas of Scotland. So a lot of people might apply to Scotland with a view to training in Edinburgh or Glasgow, but they need doctors all over um, the country. So they're offering incentives, things like free, ac free accommodation, free parking, enhanced clinical skills and simulation training. Um, and things like that to try and um, boost applications to these areas. So if that's something you're interested in doing anyway, then there's even more reason to go, go and train in these areas. Okay, so that's the Foundation Priority Programme. Um, if we move on now to talk about something a little bit different. So the previous programmes that we've talked about um, are all offered through the UK Foundation Programme, which is sort of the main place that you apply that offers all the programs organizes it within the UK. The Psychiatry Foundation Fellowship is a new program that is being offered by the Royal College of Psychiatrists. It is separate to foundation, the foundation program in that it's sort of like an, an add-on bonus rather than a different type of program um, and it's offered through this Royal College of Psychiatrists, not by the UK Foundation Programme. So you would apply to the Foundation Programme and then if you have a keen interest in, in psychiatry and you would have interest in undertaking this fellowship, it's a separate application that's made a little bit later on in the year um, to this programme. So it's, it's aimed at people with an interest in psychiatry. 
it wants to improve exposure to the specialty and try and support foundation doctors that are interested in psychiatry um, with their interests throughout the foundation program to try and maintain their enthusiasm for the specialty. And this is especially important for people who might not get um, much exposure to psychiatry through clinical placement. Just because you have an interest in psychiatry doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get a foundation post that has psychiatry as one of the rotations. So it's aimed at people to try and retain that interest in your foundation years. Um, so what they want to do is support support you in those years and also help you with applying to specialty training. Throughout your two years, it's trying to emphasise the psychological aspects of medicine, even through placements which are non-psychiatric specialties. So I'll talk quickly about how you apply and then we'll talk about what's on offer. The application is through the Royal College of Psychiatrists, as I said. Um, the details are all up on their website closer to the time um, the application form comes out um, and you apply through their website. I haven't been able to have a look at what is involved in the application because their win the application window is not open at the moment. It runs from the beginning of December to the end of January. Um, but I imagine that it would be filling in details of why you're interested in psychiatry, what you've sort of done to explore this interest in medical school and why you would be interested in this post. Um, they don't interview for it, um, it's based on your application. So you have to apply to the foundation programme um, as usual. I think you can apply to an academic foundation programme or a foundation priority programme as well as this. Um, this is like a bolt-on in a way um, rather than a type of foundation programme. Um, and the Royal College of Psychiatrists liaises with the UK Foundation Programme Office, which does all of the allocations to the programme, um, and tells them who they are interested in offering these posts to. And then the UK Foundation Programme Office will allocate applicants to programmes accordingly prior to sending out all of the allocations, the job allocations in April, essentially. So apply December to January and then you'll find out at the same time as everyone else what job you're allocated to. Um, so what can you actually get through this? Um, essentially, you get a dedicated psychiatry supervisor with weekly supervisions um, in psychiatry. Um, they give mentorship, they can provide advice and support as well as this teaching. There's also the opportunity to attend ballot groups throughout the year. And there are a number of perks that you would get, which you would normally need to pay for, um, but they're offered free to people on this program. So you get free registration to attend the Royal College of Psychiatrists International Congress. And there are special college events throughout the year where you can meet like-minded people um, and network. You also get um, quite extensive access to some of their online resources. So they, you get access to lots and lots of psychiatry modules and podcasts to enable, to enable you to expand your interest in psychiatry and explore that. Um, and you also get free access to their online learning portal for preparation for their entrance exams to become a member um, of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, which is the MR psych, MRC psych examinations. And you would get journal subscriptions as well. So if you're interested in having all of those things whilst you're doing your foundation programme, then you can apply for this Psychiatry Foundation Fellowship in the December to January window after you've made your other foundation programme applications. So, sorry, I know that's quite a lot of information about different things, but hopefully it has made it a little bit clearer what options you have that go beyond the traditional foundation programme or the academic foundation programme. Um, and I've just got a few things to try and keep in mind as you go through this procedure. Um, so one of the key things is to allow time for applications. As I said before, it's quite a straightforward procedure in that you're just ranking foundation schools or you're ranking jobs and you're providing fairly basic information about yourself. But as you apply for more and more programmes, it takes up more and more time. And if you're applying for an academic foundation programme, then 
there are additional things you need to do which will require more work and sort of a bit more thought so given that you can apply for the foundation program two different units of application for the academic foundation program and the foundation priority program if you did decide to apply to all of them that is four applications to put in within the same application window so just a little bit of prior planning might be helpful if you do decide to apply for lots and lots of different things as i mentioned a couple of times before if you do get an academic foundation program or a foundation priority program offer then you are taken out of the main allocations um, so if you do later change your mind and decide you don't want to do that job you are completely out of the process and as we said at the beginning most people don't end up doing an academic foundation program and most people won't do one of these priority programs the majority of people will do just like the foundation program but there are always always opportunities to get involved in everything that we've talked about especially within the foundation priority program like everything that they're offering you can do off your own back it just takes a bit more you to be a bit more proactive and it won't be built into your program it's all things that you need to do like off your own back um so that's essentially everything i had to say i've allowed a bit of time for questions now if anyone has any questions at all i will just have a quick look at the chat on here um okay Okay, so if anyone has any questions, just post them on the chat. But other than that, opportunities research. Okay, so someone has asked opportunities for research, teaching, management, where should I look to find these? I think, um, so are you asking that while you're in your foundation years, um, you should be, where would you find these kind of opportunities? Essentially, there's a lot of, there are things on offer um, throughout the year. So teaching opportunities come up all the time during your foundation years. Um, medical students that are linked to the university um, where you are doing so if you're in a university hospital um, oh how about prior to foundation okay so while you're in medical school there's always the opportunity to teach other medical students in the years below you you can also get involved in um, voluntary teaching programs or things like this so for prospective medical students there are certain companies, I don't know the names off the top of my head, um, that can that provide like teaching and guidance to students. Um, but I would say that the easiest way to get involved in teaching while you're still at medical school is by teaching younger years. Some medical schools will have a sort of official programme for this where you can just get involved through them and offer supervision. But it's about being a bit proactive um and offering things off your own back so if you know students in the younger years or you do sports or music or anything like that you can offer teaching through those societies um either in the form of formal teaching sessions on a weekly basis or exam preparation help things like that management opportunities i think they're harder to come by while you're a medical student and i don't think you need to worry too much about that then this is definitely more a skill that you need to develop while you're actually training um, rather than in medic medical school. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. And then in terms of research opportunities, again, they're harder to come by. It's about talking to maybe your lecturers or people that you meet while you're on your clinical placements about things that they might be doing and expressing interest and trying to get involved in that way. 
as I said, it's harder to do things yourself. It is possible, but the, the, the amazing things about like the academic foundation program and the foundation priority program are that they sort of formalize all of this for you so that you don't have to go out and look for things. The opportunities are just handed to you. Okay. How to apply for non-training posts? Where could we get placements? Um, I'm not quite sure I understand the question, I'm afraid. Do you mind phrasing it in a different way? While we're waiting, uh, uh, I to add on a position for uh, the for uh, management opportunities. Um, there may be less clinical management opportunities uh, available as an extra expect in medical school society, yeah, in exactly. sports societies or academic societies, we have opportunities to organise events, uh, manage projects, etc. And that's all really good. Yeah, experience. any any um, committee that you can be on in medical school through the activities that you're interested in is essentially a management opportunity, as Cameron said. Yeah, it's not all about like doing things formally um, through like clinical stuff. Um, 